Hi, and welcome to another edition of Dessert Devotion, where I look forward to sharing with you two of my favorite things, easy dessert recipes and an encouraging word. Today's featured recipe, blackberry hand pies. And there's a twist. We're going to make them in an air fryer. I can't wait to show you. Okay, I'm gonna start on a floured surface with refrigerated pie crust. I'm just using a plain old cereal bowl as my marker and a butter knife to cut out the round circles for our hand pies. You can choose any size you want, but I find that this size, a little bit larger than a biscuit cutter, uh, three or four inches across is the perfect size to place in our air fryer. I've taken my pie dough scraps and placed them in a ball and now I'm going to roll those out again and try to get it to that same thinness, remembering that you're going to fold it over, right, for a hand pie. So you don't want it to be too thick, but then again you want it to be thick enough to hold the filling inside. I can probably squeeze maybe another one or two out of this one. So I'll just grab my bowl again and my butter knife and start cutting. For our blackberry pie filling, we'll use two cups of fresh blackberries, two third cups of sugar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of cornstarch for thickener. I'm just gonna stir this and place it on medium heat on the stovetop. Once it comes to a boil, I'll immediately turn it down to simmer for 10 minutes. Your compote should be thick and syrupy and the liquid should be kind of like pancake syrup and then the fruit is cooked down just a little bit but still chunky. You want to let it cool uh, a little bit before you start putting it in your hand pie so it won't be too runny. I'm placing about a tablespoon of filling in each of my hand pies. Now I'm going to use a beaten egg as an egg wash, and I'm gonna place this around each of the edges of my hand pies, and this will be what we use to seal the hand pie so that the filling doesn't seep out while it's in the hand fryer. So I'll place this around the edge of each one. You just need enough to go around the edge, and you can use your finger if you want to. Now I'm going to fold the dough over to make a crescent shape and I'm going to press the edges down firmly. And as you can see, some of the filling kind of escaped, but that's okay. We're just going to take a fork and press it down all the way around. So even if some of your filling escapes, don't worry. Just go back and make sure that you've pressed the dough down. You also want to make sure as you fold these over, see, it looks good, that you use a moist fork. So what I do after I press the pan pie down is I like to keep just a little water handy and I'll keep the fork wet. That just helps me press through both layers of the dough and when the fork gets a little sticky I'll just reach for a little more water and keep going. I also had some apple pie filling on hand this is just the canned stuff. So if you don't want to make your own filling, another shortcut is to choose apple or cherry or blueberry filling to make your hand pies as well. I've preheated my air fryer for 10 minutes on 350. I'm going to spray that basket well with cooking spray. I think this is just an olive oil spray. I'll place my hand pies in the basket, and I like to make sure that they're spread out, just like anything you cook in the air fryer so the air can circulate. Then I'll go back over the top of the hand pies with a little more of the oil to ensure they get that nice brown color. And if you want, you can sprinkle a little raw sugar or turbinado sugar on top. Now we're going to cook our hand pies 
in the air fryer on 350 for 10 minutes. Well, now that we have the air fryer going, we can now sit back for a few minutes and settle into our time of devotion. Well, getting ready to make these blackberry hand pies, I wanted to use my pastry brush and I was looking all over the place. I looked through all the drawers where it would normally be. I looked in the dishwasher twice, looked for it, looked for it, turned everything upside down. Then of course, when I finally find it, I realize it has been repurposed to use for the grill. Well, no luck there. How do you look for things? Do you do like me and like walk in circles? looking in the same places where you normally keep things. I'm usually organized, so sometimes I just keep looking back at the spot where I normally put it, at this blank space, wondering where in the world it could be. I try to retrace my steps. If it's something like my lost keys, if I'm looking for something like a favorite book, I'm looking all in the cushions of the couch, I'm looking under the couch. If I'm looking for a favorite shirt or favorite socks, sometimes I'll just take the whole laundry basket and turn it upside down, trying to be thorough and looking for what I really want. Sometimes we enlist the help of others. I know my kids do when they can't find a certain toy that they're looking for. And my youngest is especially good at treating his toy box like that laundry basket. He will take every single toy out of that box looking for the one toy that he wants to play with in that moment. The two of them will tag team, looking all over the house, scouring the place for that last missing Lego or missing puzzle piece or missing army man. But boy, when they find it. It's so funny to hear one of them call out, I found it, I found it, come look. And they get so excited. Well, today it reminds me of the joy that God has when he searches and searches for us, looking for us, pursuing us with his love and grace. And we see the story of that in the parable of the lost coin told in the Gospel of Luke in the 15th chapter. In verses 8 through 10, it reads, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, singing, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now this story is usually called the parable of the lost coin, and it's told in a series of stories in the 15th chapter of Luke that are very familiar. The story of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. Of course, if I were to name this story, I would name it the parable of the woman searching for her coin. Because the whole idea here is to have the image of God in this woman, one who is searching, searching nonstop in relentless pursuit of her coin. And it gives us an understanding of God's love and grace towards us, always searching, searching, and pursuing us. Jesus concludes this parable by saying that there is rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. God is always pursuing us and celebrating when we are found even when we have been lost. So what does it mean to be lost? What does it mean to repent? Well, it means to turn away from our sin, turn away from our lost ways, and also to turn towards God, to turn towards a life in Christ. In those moments when we decide that we've had enough, of trying it our way. We've had enough of trying it in our own power, in our own strength, in our own mind. When we've had enough of destructive habits, destructive relationships, things that have driven a wedge between us and our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we can turn to God. We can repent. 
we can find our way even when we have been lost in our own tragic story, our own tragic behavior, our own sinful ways. And what we find when we turn to the Lord, it's not embarrassment or anger or wrath or guilt or shame. Instead, in this parable, Jesus teaches us that what we encounter is one who has been looking for us all along. We encounter one who celebrates us because we have decided to do it God's way. And when we turn and look, we realize that God's love, God's grace has been pursuing us all along. So your choice today to look for God's way, to look for God's wisdom in our answers, in our needs, in our longings, know that that is met by one who celebrates us and has been waiting and looking for the opportunity to shower us with divine forgiveness, grace, and love. So turn to God. You don't have to dwell on the past. You don't have to feel, feel that guilt and shame. You are forgiven and loved. The Lord has been looking for you. Amen. Oh, look at that nice golden brown color. These are perfect. In fact, my boys have spent some time with their grandparents and I think I'll wrap some up to bring to their house. These are going to go fast. Well, I can't wait to share these blackberry hand pies with my mom. I know blackberry is her favorite and I hope that you enjoy it too. Be sure to join me next time for another edition of Dessert Devotion. Thank you.